So we're at Gardens Plus in Dawnwood, just two minutes east of Peterborough, Ontario. And I'm going to show you how to hybridize daylilies and how you can actually create your own. Um, when you do them from seed, you're basically creating and inventing a new variety. Um, so when you see a daylily out there, it normally gives you the date that the daylily was introduced as well as the hybridizer. And they're the ones that get to name it. Um, so we have a daylily here. This is the pistol here. And these are the stamens with the pollen on the end. So I have in my hand a stamen from another daylily, so not the same one. I might pick characteristics that are totally different, a brighter color maybe, a darker color, maybe an edge, and then hopefully I'll get some babies out of this one, um, basically seedlings, and be able to create my own. So all you do is wait for um, the pollen to be nice and fluffy, which in our climate, um, we're zone 5B, is usually after about 10 o'clock in the morning up until mm, about 2 o'clock or so, depending on the weather, of course. Um, it's a little windy today, so bear with me here. So basically, you would take the pollen, um, the stamen right off, another daylily, and then just dab it right on the end of the pistol. Now, if it takes, tomorrow when this daylily shrivels up, um, it'll shrivel up like normal, and within a few days, what happens is this part here would actually swell. So if I was going to uh, be serious about this and like to keep track of the parents, then I would do a jewelry tag. I'd put the name of the pollen parent, so the other daily the pollen came from on the tag, and literally just tag this one bloom. And then when that uh, hopefully takes and forms a seed head. Um, it's too early, I don't have any to show you. Um, but a seed head basically would swell. It looks kind of like a bud. This is tomorrow's bud, probably here. And in this case, I'd like to show you, um, when you have the pistol sticking out like this, you can actually hybridize that before it even opens the next day. So you can get a head start. The other thing is you can take the stamens off some of your favorites that you like to use as pollen parents, put them in a, maybe an old film container if you have it or a pill bottle and store it in the freezer in case the daylily you want to pollinate with isn't available to do so that day. Um, so then the bud swells up, um, the seed pod, sorry, swells up and when it just starts to crack at the top and it's uh, rounder and obviously shorter than an actual daylily bud, so you can tell the difference. It's usually for us around September, October. Then I would take note of the the pod parent as well as the pollen parent that I'd already have on there, and then put it on the counter, let them dry out, and put them in the fridge for at least eight weeks. In our climate, I like to just uh, start them in my greenhouse in normally March, February or March, but you can start them under lights in January um, or just wait until May and put them in the ground and you can mark your, your parents and then in about two years you'll see your first bloom, decide whether you would like to keep it or not and uh, you would actually be creating. Uh, what I didn't say is the pod, the seed pod, you could end up having anywhere from two to three seeds up to about 15, but each one of those is a sibling um, so they could all be quite different or sort of similar but definitely different. It's just like when we have children with genetics and you have no idea what you're going to end up with um, but it's uh, pretty cool and during daily time when my seedlings are starting to bloom for the first time um, even the second year when I get to see how much more they're improved it's uh, my favorite time of year. So this is from Gardens Plus. Uh, last three weeks of July are daylilies in bloom. Feel free to come for a visit. And I do workshops um, and show division and things like that as well. Um, you can check us out at gardensplus.ca. Happy gardening.